Whoops. How you doing there? It's all the important stuff that I should have touched you in high school or college, and they never did, including me. It's because I realized all my teachers were fools right from the get-go. They weren't teaching me anything important. I realized uh, if you were super rich, you know, back in the day, you were taught certain stuff like Aristotle, Plato, Proclus, Numenius, Iamblichus. <laughs> you, <laughs> you weren't uh, reading the garbage history books that uh, kids that I read. Just, and I'm not against history. I know a lot more history than most people do. An important thing is to learn how to think. Here's the important truth of uh, monistic metaphysics, whether it matter if it's Pythagorean, Platonic, Neoplatonic, and that's all the same thing. There's only one universal truth, and this, of course, is Sophia Perennis, uh, perennial philosophy. Um, people say there are many roads to Rome, leading to Rome. If you're like a thousand miles from Rome, about every road pretty much leads to Rome, <laughs> you know, even if it's peripherally. The closer you get to Rome, you know, the fewer the roads are to Rome. Um, so this relativistic uh, nonsense, while true, is ultimately incorrect. But let's get to the heart of the matter on metaphysics, whether it be Platonic, Indian, or Egyptian. The fundamental things that causes 99% of the strife in this world. I like going into my uh, forum, by the way, and picking up unusual stones in my creek. I don't know why I like doing that, but I do. Let's talk about uh, the true metaphysics that are taught by these uh, these uh, uh, monisms of, uh, of uh, Indian, Greek, and uh, Egyptian metaphysics. And this is the most important thing. Fundamentally, I mean, other than the liberation methodology, the genre of the disobjectification, which of course is paramount. And this is the most important one because it causes 99% of the strife in this world. Is that people are one thing, like you, me, Let's just be specific here rather than general, but even though we're referring to everybody, obviously so. And people were born with different traits. Someone might be born with like one leg or, you know, someone might be born blind. And of course, this is the world of antinomies. And we are always coveting or, uh, you know, putting down others for, you know, uh, their lot in life. Of course, everybody has a lot in life. You know, we could be broke or poor or ugly or any one of a number of thousands of things. People will say, well, that's just uh, the result of, uh, you know, deeds in a past life. And I don't care what people believe on that. But we all suffer these antinomies. We're never going to have a perfect system because if everybody had all the money in the world and we lived to all be 200 years old, we had free food and clothing, and uh, we never had to work a day in our lives, um, people would still cover their neighbor's yard. They would cover their neighbor's wife. I mean, they would covet something. You know, the neighbor has better hair than I do, and you know, they would generate uh, envy and all sorts of uh, bad feelings with themselves. But there's two fundamental things that were never, ever taught to you, I guarantee you. And certainly not so in any sort of religious discourse, no matter what religion it is you cleave to, is that people never see that which they truly are. And of course, by see, I mean it cannot be objective, obviously, because no one can see who they are objectively, ultimately. Yeah? In ancient Pali, it's called Mahapurisha, or the supreme person, i.e. the transcendent or ontological person, which, of course, is not objective, not that which you see in the mirror. People see themselves, whether that be me or you or anybody, as the reason for all the strife, well, 99% of the strife in the world. They see themselves as either person number one, which is the psychophysical, that person that they see in the mirror, which undergoes uh, old age sickness and death, you know, suffers any number of a countless things such as the antinomies of life you know injuries you know you lost your hand in a shark accident or something like that and, you know you bemoan that for the rest of your life because you think that's who you are everybody suffers to this greater or lesser degrees that's person number one that everybody everybody misidentifies with and the second one is actually the most horrible one and then it creates so much suffering in this world as if there isn't enough suffering already but that suffering is necessitated. For the born, there is no escape from old age, sickness, and death. I don't care what you think about original Buddhism. I mean, I don't care at all. Couldn't care less. But, you know, shortly before kicking it off, Gautama, not a Buddha, Buddha's Akim Khan or a non-person, 
you know, was uh, doubled over in extreme pain and throwing up and vomiting. I mean, that's just existential suffering. It doesn't matter how wise or transcendent someone is, physical suffering is inescapable. A lot of people are completely oblivious about that, but let's get down to number two, which is the most important one, is that outside of people seeing themselves as that critter in the mirror, you know, the psychophysical being, yeah, they see themselves as their beliefs. And nothing creates more strife on this earth than people thinking that they are their beliefs. You know, here's the real person, okay, underneath, which is not objective. It would be the transcendent soul. And first they see themselves as the psychophysical critter in the mirror, you know. Whatever you look like, for, for, for greater or worse, they see themselves as this. And then above all of that, and preeminently what people see themselves as, especially as they grow older, or they grow up, I should say. They see themselves as their beliefs. I believe in this, and you don't believe in that, therefore I hate you, and I want to do things to you. And You know, I well, you attacked me. It's like, no, what you said was, you know, illogical and unintelligent. I'd like to have a debate on that, which, of course, a debate doesn't mean fight. You know, what you said doesn't make any sense in either conventional or even a transcendent sense, it doesn't make any sense. Well, that's what I believe, and you're wanting to argue with me, and that's my belief, and I am what I believe, so you're attacking me. Like, no. You are not your beliefs. Everybody is... People... Some people actually see themselves as the soul, which is transcendent, the psychophysical, which is good. They lead a happier life. It's the reason why atheists are incredibly miserable, by the way. Regardless of religion, okay? Atheism, by the way, has nothing to do with God. Did you know that? Atheism, true atheism, atheos, as mentioned in Philippus 29d, the first dimension of that, has to do with the denial of an ontological substrate, i.e. the noumena that sits underneath phenomena. Yeah? Forget about God one way or the other. Specifically, it's called metaphysical atheism. But people see themselves as a set of beliefs, and that's who they are. Well, I my beliefs. I believe this, and I believe that, and... You know, I know I'm so-and-so, and I look like this in the mirror, and this is my picture, you know, but more important than that is what I believe. These are my convictions, and, you know, I uh, believe in this, and, uh, you know, and I hang out with people that believe the same nonsense that I do. And it could be some really crazy nonsense. Because um, I've debated, just for example, the Turmanada, and I am literally the world's foremost expert on the definition of the term manat or anatman. I said, listen, this is, you know, we'll have a debate on this. You know, we'll, we'll, you know, your belief on this is completely invalid. Not only is it not supported doctrinally, it makes no logical sense. You cannot have both transcendence and uh, an amatya adatya, which means the immortal elements. You can't have uh, liberation. Liberation of what, by what, from what. None of these things are, impos are, impos are possible at all without a transcendent element. You know, you just, you don't know the term. Nothing you said is either logical and it's not doctrinal. And they get really, really upset. And when you argue, just talking the way I'm talking now, I'm just using this as one example. It could be politics, it could be anything. People get really upset and they think that you're attacking them. Kind of like, you know, you know, you're beating, you know, you're <laughs> you attacked me. It's like, no. You are not your belief system. If kids had been taught this stuff in elementary school and, like, you know, had it, uh, you know, drilled in to their, uh, into their subconscious since a young age, these kids would not be such, you know, because you have you ever seen the world more polarized? than it is right now? It's not. It's just, it's incredibly polarized. Everybody's walking around thinking that not only are they that critter in the mirror, the psychophysical, which they are not. The most repeated phrase in ancient Pali, for example, is isakaya namisata. You know, this body is not the soul or that which I truly am, such as tatvamasi or hamramasmi. You need to know Sanskrit to know what that means. Means that thou art, meaning the transcendent or the divine. You're not that critter in the mirror, but these are the two selves that people see themselves as. And that's the reason for 95 to 99% of the strife in the world. You are not that, your belief systems. 
And you're not that critter of flesh and blood and everything else you see in the mirror that brush your teeth. You're none of those things. You are that, but that is not objective. It cannot be known objectively. It is antecedent to the psychophysical. It is antecedent, absolutely, to one's beliefs. And everybody thinks that they are their beliefs. And that's the reason behind all the strife in the world, most of it anyway. And that's just the, one of the most important things about life. And none of you were taught that. Even if you went to Sunday school for, you know, every weekend for 50 years, you never would have learned that from the preacher. You never would have learned it in any religious setting. I guarantee you, you wouldn't have. There could be some rare circumstance where I could be wrong on that one, but I mean, 99.999%, no, it's not, you're not getting that from any of them. Why don't people want to learn these fundamental things? I love it when people debate me because the less I react, the madder they get. And not that I enjoy them getting mad. They'll, you know, they'll say, oh, you're fat, bald, and ugly. I can't stand you. you. You know, it's like, well, let's, that's all well and fine. But let's get back to discussing this topic. And they want to elicit emotions from me. It's like, well, you're not going to get it. Formal debate is a formal debate. It has nothing to do with pejoratives and, you know, personal invectives. It's not going to get you anywhere. That's a red herring, too, by the way. Um, every kid should be taught this at the earliest age. Like, little Johnny or little Susie, you know, you are this, but it is not objective. You cannot know it objectively. You can only know it through... Anamnesis, theurgy, smriti, sati, jhana. It goes by a hundred different words, okay? Theurgy, a hundred different words can this be known, but not objectively. You are not that thing you see in the mirror, you know, which is suffer, subject to the slings and arrows of old age sickness, shark attacks, you know, whatever the heck, you know. I mean, look at me, I'm fat and tattooed, my hair fell out, yeah? Probably fell out due to stress, probably genetics, actually, you know. I don't like looking in the mirror to brush my teeth, but at least I know I'm not that. And you're definitely not your beliefs. But everybody thinks that, I believe this, I believe that, that's who I am. I am my beliefs. No, you're absolutely not your beliefs. Why do you think people are so polarized? People are so polarized because nobody out there, almost nobody, 99.999%, never learned this fact. Never. It's so important. Yep. Incredibly important. Anyway, I wanted this to be like a short, brief lesson in uh, the metaphysics of Sophia Perennis. You are not those two persons. Those are not who you are. As the old phrase goes, Yisakaya Namisata. That is not that which I truly am, that with a capital T. Okay? Thank you so much. Goodbye.